So one idea for the mechanism behind language acquisition, right, where the idea that language, again, is a, a complex cognitive system that, in essence, is basically mapping a sound, or if you're speaking, a sign language signs to meaning, right? And one idea for the mechanism behind this process is something sort of happily called the language acquisition device, or LAD for short. And the idea is very, very simple. There's information from the environment, and then the language acquisition device processes that information. It's an unconscious process that's going on inside a child's mind, and it's used only for learning, for acquiring language, hence the name language acquisition device. Uh, and out of that comes successful language acquisition, right? So it's kind of a you know, little black box in there, just kind of chug it away, focused on language acquisition. And this uh, is in line with what's sometimes called the linguistic nativist or the generativist approach, uh, which we'll talk about in a little bit when we talk about theoretical viewpoints in a different podcast. But the premise is that the language acquisition device, the LAD, contains some domain-specific knowledge, that is, knowledge specifically about language. Right? This language acquisition device contains special language sauce about the structure of language, and this is often called universal grammar because the structure of a language, the system is sometimes referred to as a grammar. So universal grammar is that knowledge that allows you, that language specific knowledge that allows you to pick up whatever language you might be trying to learn, right? So the focus is on the description of children's prior innate, hence the nativist point, linguistic knowledge, and how that knowledge interacts with the data from your native language to together produce knowledge, a complete linguistic system for that native language that you're trying to learn. And so again, domain specific is knowledge specifically about human language. So this language acquisition device is saying this is knowledge you only use for language acquisition, just specific to the domain of language acquisition. Now, again, the idea is that in combination with the information from that environment, the language acquisition device provide, you know, gets you that head start that you need. It gives you a little bit of knowledge about how human languages work. And that little bit of knowledge is enough to get the child started to allow the child to use her language input more effectively, to notice certain things more easily, to only consider or entertain certain hypotheses about language words, to sort of guide the process a little bit on the basis of the input that's coming in to get that head start. And you know, you might think to yourself, well, why do children need this kind of head start exactly? And this has to do with how we, when we go and think about the input that kids are getting, when we actually look through things like the child's database at the input that children are getting, it seems like, for various reasons, the input is too impoverished for children to converge on the right language rules without that kind of head start. So this issue of the input being too impoverished is sometimes called the poverty of the stimulus, right? So poverty, impoverished, stimulus is the data. So the input, the data, the stimulus is too impoverished, is too poor, is too ambiguous, is too noisy. It's no good, poverty of the stimulus. It's not good enough on its own to get the right language rules, to get the right linguistic system, to get the right grammar. So the idea is that's why you need a little bit of a head start with this innate linguistic knowledge in the language acquisition device. Children need something else besides just the data in the input to help them decide what the right rules of the language are.